Welcome back to another video guys. So the next time I'll see you will be on 13th April unless and of course there is an update required in between. So we'll continue our discussion from where we left last week. The first point was there is some shift to safety and value that is happening that is mainly in the nifty 50, 100, 200 space. Keep a tab on those stocks that have fallen less from all time high level that should primarily be your watch list. Small mid micro cap space will be more volatile. You're seeing a lot of up and down movements in this particular space and this will continue. There is some selective buying that you should be doing here. Again, look at this particular list that is stocks that have fallen least from all time high level. And get back to the basics of scanning stocks, even from the SMM space, but mainly in the nifty 50, 100, 200 space, and then wait for further stability in the market. I'll come to some of these points in a bit. Now, I also explained last week how you should be tracking the market breadth using advanced decline of number of stocks, tracking Nifty 500 index, and do track this every week. Don't make it too complicated. Don't track it on a daily basis. I'll just update this slide for you today. So this is the update that has happened in the last 15 days in the market, that the number of advancing stocks are still limited. More improvement has happened in the Nifty 50, 100, and 200 space but the broader market still needs to improve a lot. With respect to sectors, there are some sectors that have already started moving up, that is namely uh, consumption, infrastructure, you look at the Indian manufacturing index, uh, you know, a couple of more uh, sectors do exist, they are making another lifetime high, so look into those sectors, and mainly these stocks are from the Nifty 50, 100, 200 list. The small mid micro cap index is still about 13, 14% lower than the all time high level, and obviously it's going to take a little bit time for improvement to come in. The remarks for market breadth is that we are still relatively thin. There is some improvement that has happened in the last 15 days, but we need more evidence from the market, at least to go deep into the SMM space, which is the small bid micro cap. The large cap and the mid to large cap space is in a completely different kind of a market. Whereas the broader market, if you open up the charts of uh, small cap stocks, micro cap stocks, they still need a lot of work, a lot of improvement. So today what I'm going to do is I'll explain some bit of this homework here, this particular part here. I'll pull out five structures, look for similar structures in your watch list, and I'll then pull out those five structures which should, you should be completely avoiding. Now when I'll be putting up the structures, obviously it will be a few stocks. So I will make a disclaimer here that it is not buy and sell recommendation. At the end of the day, you have to do your own research or ask your financial advisor. But because I'm explaining some examples, I have to pull out stocks data. So when it comes to homework, see my homework revolves around long term trend. It revolves around price and volume structure. It revolves around looking for which stocks have fallen least and which sectors have fallen the least. All right. But when I'm looking at price and volume, there are, there are mainly five points that I'm asking. Number one. When the price expands, what happens to the volume? Number two, when the price contracts, what happens to the volume? What is the volume pattern above 50 DMA? What is the volume pattern below 50 DMA? And do we get follow through volume? What is follow through volume? If you get a wide range candle, strong volumes, after that, what happens? What kind of volume comes in? So I'll first open up five structures. These similar structures you have to be focusing upon. So the first example is of a stock called Indus Tower. Again, I think it is in the FNO space. I, I'm not sure, but uh, this, is a, this is a company that is uh, traded on high volumes. What you have to be looking out in this particular structure, first it is trading near all time high. In this particular structure, those who will chase it will obviously struggle, mainly because of the kind of market we are into. But you have to look for such phases such phases of consolidation, such phases of pullback, when you know the volume activity starts going lower. Can you see? In other words, this is nothing but Mark Minervini's tennis ball price action. I think Mark Minervini also learned it from uh, somewhere. I forgot the name of the original uh, author who had written about this. But this is what basically you want. Your stocks trading near all time high, then consolidating you know, in a sideways manner, not printing too many wide range candles and the volumes going lower. So this chart that you see is simple volume and a 50 period moving average on the volume just to measure the average trend. You can use a 20, you can use a 100, you can use a 150, you can use a 200. 
it won't make much of a difference. Just be consistent with it. So if some of the stocks in your watch list have already run up this way, then you need to wait for some consolidation to happen and volumes need to contract. That is move lower as the consolidation happen. The second structure would be something like this. This is of Larsen and Tubro. This has formed a wonderful cup and handle pattern. You can see a breakout is played out here. Ever since the breakout, look, the volume is trying to reach the average 50 day volume, which is a great sign. Again, this chart, if you see, has moved up a lot in recent times. So you will have to wait for another bout of consolidation to happen, which is inevitable. This is how markets function. Make sure during that time, the volumes drift lower, that is consolidate, volumes fall, that becomes a valid entry on a pullback. Can you see the difference here when LNT previously pulled back to the 50 DMA? Look at the volumes. Volumes are just too much. This is a classic signal that you should be avoiding the stock at least from the very short term. And when you get one more base, one more breakout above 50 DMA, look at the spike in volume here. And then look at the consolidation. During this consolidation, volume largely remains flat. This is the signal, this is the sign of stronger stocks in a market. The third structure, now this is a recent example, again, IFP industries from the consumption sector. Earlier, look at the kind of candles and the kind of volume came about. Then as the stock consolidated, look at the volume. Volume is just nowhere. And now you're seeing a fresh breakout coming in. Look at the spike in volume. Again, clearly above the 50 day, uh, you know, simple moving average of volume. Again, it can be 100, 150, 200, 250, it does not matter, be consistent, all right? The fourth would be something like a century textile. The same template, as it moves above 50 DMA, look at the spike in volume. As it moves lower, look at the volume contraction. Again, it pulls back to 50 DMA, look at the volume contraction. Then it falls below 50 DMA, there is still consolidation in volume and then you see one more breakout into all time high. Look at this volume here, look at this volume here. This is testing 50 DMA, this is breaking out decisively after for forming some kind of a contraction. The last example I would give you is again from a consumption sector. There's a lot of construction noise in the background, I cannot do anything about it. But again, coming to the chart, this is of Avenue Supermarts, that is DMART. Now, when DMART earlier in the year or previous quarter was trading below 50 DMA, the volumes were not great. Look at the kind of volume spike that played out. But as DMART sustained below 50 DMA, look at the volume. There was a clear contraction here. In recent times, look at the volume whenever the price is sustaining above something like 50 DMA. It has just moved higher uh, with strong momentum. I have pulled out this particular example uh, you know, of DMART. For those of you who are regular on this channel, you know my view about the nature of management of this company, the pedigree of this company in terms of delivering consistent numbers being debt free. But the reason I pulled out this particular chart was if you go back previous year, six months back, look at the commentary of analyst when DMART was doing here, that is, that was moving in this range, that is falling from 3500 to 3300, 3200. Look at the comments. It's important for you to uh, listen those things again. It's not that difficult to find on YouTube. The common template, high PE. The company is not growing fast. The company is facing stiff competition. The management is losing its way. The management is not expanding as the competitors are. By the way, from this period to today, DMART has moved up 35%. It's a mega large cap. In the same period, look at the small mid micro cap stocks that were being spoken so highly about. Majority of them are down 30-40%. That is what happens when you focus on short term news and ignore such amazing companies that are there in India. Now it is, I don't know what is the current level at DMART, whether it is 45, 4600, I don't know. I don't track it on a daily basis. It does not mean that this company goes from 4,600 to 6,000 in one year. It means there will be periods in this year also where DMART will face a lot of volatility. But the pedigree of company is extremely important. The management of the company is extremely important. And one small thing I'll tell you, all those people who are talking sort of, you know, meaningless things here 
are the ones who will keep giving buy calls now. That is how stock market functions. So you got to use your own brain. You got to believe your own research and stick with pedigree companies. There is one company today that is uh, that is being spoken about in a very similar fashion that DMART was just because one other company has come in that particular segment and they are dropping the uh, you know uh, price of uh, of the main commodity of the company that I'm talking about that this is going to happen that is going to happen it is also from the consumption space I don't want to take the name here but if you own a house and if you've gotten some uh, you know paint job or something done you know what I'm referring to so it's the same thing that has been spoken about look for price volume patterns there today they might not be anything but few months down the line it can give you early signs of what may come in the future leaders don't give up so easily excellent management will always find a way to adapt and you know that is how market works don't blindly trust analysts because when stock moves lower they are bearish when stock moves higher they are bullish so these were five structures that you have to uh, you know keep on your radar this structure is very similar to one of the structures that we discussed earlier i think it was the first stock uh indus towers you know a very similar structure here so even in structures uh, like dmart you'll have to wait for now consolidation and a pullback on lower volumes if dmart because i'm taking the example here starts printing wide range candles with heavy volumes then it will be a sign of further consolidation in in this particular stock now five structures i'll show you that you should be avoiding now when i take the name of masgao doc this this comment that I'm going to make has nothing to do with long term potential, medium term potential. Today I'm discussing about structures that should be on your radar, on your watch list as of today, as of next few weeks. Will I select Masgao Dog? I won't. See, below 50 DMA, the volumes are lower, which is a great sign. But the stock is way below 50 DMA now. I would want this particular stock to form a range for volumes to drop further then for a breakout to happen that is when it would qualify so if there are some stocks that look very similar to this in your watch list these have to be avoided again my comment is uh, from the very short term kind of trades that you build up over a period of time it has nothing to do with the quality of the management or the excellent potential that this particular company has Aisha motors now this stock is above 50 dma but why as a trader i will not select it the reason being look at the volume activity here every time the stock moves below 50 dma volume spikes it moves above 50 dma volume spikes there is no pattern here all right so such stocks even if they give a wide range breakout of 10 percent i won't touch it i won't touch it because i'm not able to understand or correlate uh, what the price is suggesting and how the volume is supporting that point of view the third structure is tata steel again the the remarks i'll make about tata steel structures today does not me, uh, mean anything from medium term or if somebody is holding just ignore my comments but i'm 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 showing you what kind of stocks you should be trading today so look at tata steel you know does this particular stock qualify for the current cycle i would say no now if somebody is holding it from 100 110 115 that's a different story so please ignore but look at what is happening in this particular stock look at this candle look at the huge spike in volume look at this candle look at the huge spike in volume Look at this particular candle, look at the spike in volume. Again, look at this rejection, look at the spike in volume. So what is happening is very similar to what was going on in Aisha Motors. The stock is above 50 DMA, the trend is clearly on the upside, but the price volume relationship is not normal. A normal price volume relationship would mean when price moves up, volume expands. When price moves lower, volume contracts. This is from the classic teachings of William O'Neill and Tom Williams, who was the uh, who was the main inventor of VSA, that is volume spread analysis. So again, if, if, if any of the stock resembles what I'm showing you today on Tata Steel, again, that's not an excellent structure in the very short term. One more example I'd, I'll pull out is Vardaman Textile. Now, what is the case study of this? This particular stock, if it comes on my watch list or any similar structure, I and I just don't understand what is happening. You get really strong wide range candles, volume does not expand. You get wide range candles on the downside, volume does not expand. Volume stays below the average 50 day volume that has been there over the last few months. So this is again something where, you know, price volume relationship is not normal. Now, one argument can be made that the volume is getting skewed 
due to these volume candles here or volume bars here which is largely true but in many cases you will see that there will be many stocks that will be above 50 dma wide range candles are coming in volumes just trade at the average level always try and cut those stocks out the last structure i think this is i'll take up an example of tata lxz now here completely different thing is happening what is happening here is that if you if you look at this particular period you're getting both wide range candles on the downside and on the upside and the volume keeps spiking so again this is a structure where price volume relationship is not normal in a lot of stocks today are below 50 dma and you know they will be part of your watch list but what you got to understand is that you got to look for structures where price and volumes are moving together structures where price and volume is is uh, not behaving properly that is a place or that is a stock that you should not be into and it should not be forming core of your watch list i hope this particular point is clear so now i'll come to the part where i'll discuss what should be bought in this market the first point is the confirmation between price and volume when price expands volume should expand on the upside when price consolidates volume should contract which is the case study that we have seen here you can take example of century textile look at this price moving lower volume moving lower multiple times you can see this you know and then a final breakout happens even ifb industries is an excellent example look at the contraction look at the contraction in volumes larsen and tubro in this particular phase yes volume has contracted apart from this particular volume candle here you take a look at indus tower a perfect case study of that let us go back to this slide what you should avoid no impact of volume structures this means volume expands and price does not move avoid this combination along with the combination that when price expands volume does not move now there are plenty of examples that we discussed one was tata lxc even something like vardaman textiles was the same uh, even aisha motors is the same that many a times price is moving up volume is expanding at times it is not expanding when price is moving lower you know there are look at the scandal this scandal can scare a lot of people but look at the volume volume is nothing all right so this is what is happening whereas randomly you take this scandal will scare a lot of people but this time volume is above uh, average volume so basically you are looking for normal price volume relationship now what about stock universe so what i mentioned here is that your stock universe has to be limited and in the last video also i explained look for stocks that are breaking out of their all time high 52 week high level you know those are the stocks that have to be on your watch list now prefer all time high stocks and look for the above criteria by above criteria i mean normal price volume relationship that is when price expands volume expands when price contracts volume contracts and avoid the noise around p that is price to earnings ratio and valuation of a stock a stock is pricey due to its weight in gold now this this comment is not about dmart but it is it is about all companies in india that trade higher than 70 or 80 price to earnings ratio it can be dmart it can be uh, you know britannia nestle i don't know what is the p of unilever but uh, a lot of stocks uh, you know you take asian paints that is also considered really expensive but they are expensive for a reason if high pe is combined with low debt or no debt that is an excellent combination no matter who comes on uh, on twitter or on your favorite television channels and they speak about such companies or oh, the p is 100 the p is 120 you know what market is giving more weight to your opinion to your stock and it's not listening to that guy who's coming in and and saying 100 p stock is expensive you should not be buying those study history study some of the greatest traders that have been there in the world look at someone like william o'neil look at someone like uh, nicholas darvis look at someone like um, jim roppel mark minervini david ryan all these legends have bought stocks and you know traded 400 500 600 percent on them when their p was 100 plus all right so don't listen to defensive people who are going by you know i don't know what kind of uh, books that discourage traders from participating in stocks that are above 80 70 90 p yes there are there are some junk companies there also but that is where your common sense comes into the picture you cannot paint every company 
with the same brush. There are different companies, different management, different debt levels. Use your own common sense. Now, before you know, I end this video, I'll, I'll also summarize what is happening in the market currently. See, the first point I've written is that positive movement currently is playing out in the nifty 50, 100, 200 space. This is largely true even now. Even 15 days back, the shift you had seen, and this shift is something that I had alerted you about in December 2023 that, uh, you know, small mid micro cap space is, is really rich on uh, valuation and it needs some time and price correction. It's not that I'm not buying in the small mid micro cap space, uh, though more improvement is needed. That is point number two. I think on index level, small cap, micro cap, all these uh, indices have to consolidate. More time correction needs to happen. The breadth of the market is not good. Now I'm talking about point number three, the market is still thin. By thin, I mean, if you if you go by the traditional way of measuring market breadth, still I think about 60% stocks are below 50 DMA. So you gotta be aware, even if some of you are doing index trading, uh, you gotta be aware that uh, the index structure definitely has improved in the last 15 days, but especially uh, in the last two sessions, but uh, those structures are still prone to failure. They are prone to failure because the underneath breadth in the market, momentum in the market is still a miss. It's, it's not there at the levels where you see a really fantastic kind of index trading rallies also. So thin market is usually prone to a lot of sudden movement, counter trend movement. So, you know, your position sizing, risk per trade, has to be set at a level, uh, let's say at the midway. Let's say in a really bullish market, you trade 2% risk per trade. In this market, you should be somewhere around 1, 1.25%, all right? Now, any time of short-term trading in the market, short-term uh, style in the market has to be avoided. This includes intraday trading, options, and futures. I think you just saw yesterday what happened. Nifty uh, fell 250 points in 15 minutes. I mean, just go to the... Uh, uh, the yesterday's expiry put options people who are writing it I think it went went up six seven times in a matter of uh, in a matter of so don't do that to your own trading account it's highly detrimental it will damage you psychologically and it takes a lot of time to recover whereas equity traders and even those people who picked up index trades they were they were just sat and and seen some volatility happening and they would have carried their positions into the next series a broad remark about economy, the growth story in our country is still intact. We are just witnessing a tough environment. And let me tell you, this is a global phenomenon. Even in the US, uh, NASDAQ is doing very well. S&P 500 is doing very well. It's not that Dow Jones is not uh, moving well. It is moving well, but momentum is not there. So this is a common theme that is playing out. There are gap movements happening and that gap fades away. So that is the kind of market uh, we are into. Uh, the last point is that you, you have to be nimble enough to exit if the breadth does not improve in this market and price breaks down. Now, what is price breaking down? Let's say you again start seeing, uh, you know, Nifty decisively moving below 50 DMA, Nifty Bank moving below it. That is when you, you got to be nimble enough to exit positions. I have uh, completed, you know, uh, building my list in the small mid micro cap segment. Uh, obviously, I had positioned myself into the Nifty 50, 100, 200 segment in December, January itself. So that so that has worked well. But it's not that I'm avoiding this space. It is not that uh, I'm calling uh, for a bear market or something like that. No, I think it will serve you really well if in this year you take the market one day at a time. If you feel the trend is up, the market is above 50 DMA, 50 DMA is rising. That is Nifty 50, 100, 200, 500. Then be long, be long, but be prepared for more volatility. I think that will be the theme broadly in this market. There will always be pockets that will be doing well. It is, it is, uh, you know, up to you and your skill in terms of doing homework that you should be identifying which sectors are breaking out. So if you look at today, uh, which sectors have started breaking out? It is nifty infrastructure. It is nifty auto. If you look at other peripheral sectors, it is nifty India consumption. It is Nifty MNC index and it is in Nifty India manufacturing index. So these are broadly the sectors that are breaking out. So it's not that hard to figure out. It is just that you have to do your homework. 
And even if you look at the charts of Nifty 50, 100, 200, they are in really good structure. Only mid micro cap space, small cap space needs some time. I think over a period of time that will also work out. All right, so please leave your questions below. And if you are tracking some stocks, you can definitely name, uh, leave the name of it. I'll certainly go through it. Have a great weekend ahead. Take care and be safe.